Hello, this video is about how you could use the newly released signed in functionality for UiPath desktop products, assuming that uh, you're using UiPath products already and that you have connected your desktop products to orchestrator using the orchestrator URL and a machine key. So the assumption is that here under UiPath Assistant, if I go into preferences, uh, you have uh, selected a or orchestrator URL and a machine key, and you are connected and licensed through that particular connection. Now, if you remember back in the day when you've done that, when you've connected your local product to, uh, to Orchestrator, uh, you had to go through a number of hoops. Uh, in particular, what you had to do was that you had to create your robot that matches your uh, username on your local uh, desktop machine. You had to create your machine. Um, also here, you had to create an environment and add the robot to your environments. You had to upload your packages that, that you want to show up in, in Assistant or that you want to schedule to run on a certain time or date. Um, and also you had to create the processes, which is linking uh, the packages to a specific environment where, that, where you belong to, okay? Now with the uh, UiPath 20.8, we've introduced a new way of uh, connecting your desktop products to Orchestrator and that is through a sign-in option. So basically what you would need to do is simply sign in with your existing account, the same one that you use in your browser to sign in into Orchestrator, but this time you would do it in UiPath Assistant. Now, when you open um, uh, UiPath Assistant 20.8 or newer, uh, you will actually see what you were seeing before, the list of processes that you have assigned to the current user, to, this, uh, to, the, to the robot that you have defined on this particular machine. So nothing changes there. Actually, when you go and if you look for look up the sign-in functionality, uh, you might not even see it. You, you might not even know that it exists. And that's because we need to first enable the sign-in functionality on the orchestrator side. So we're back in orchestrator here. And before continuing, let me switch to the new design. So here on the on your account icon, you have tried the new design. It's a bit more friendlier. So if I go here at the tenant level under tenant settings security. Uh, security, you will see that there's an option here that says enable user authentication in Assistant. So what you want to do is check that box. Okay, so I will check that box. I will save. And now the next time I open Assistant, uh, you will see here there's a sign, uh, sign in button. So let's see if I just quitting Assistant and, uh, and open it, it again. It shows up or I might actually have to disconnect and uh, and reconnect. Yeah, looks like I have to disconnect or reconnect. So I go in preferences, orchestrator settings. So I'm, I'm connecting uh, using this URL uh, and this uh, machine key. I'll hit disconnect. Now you see that I'm disconnected and I already have the option to sign in. But let me just reconnect to that same um, to that same orchestrator, okay? So now I'm, now I'm reconnected to the same orchestrator and here under my account icon, I see the signing button. You're actually seeing a signing button also when you were disconnected, but I just wanted to show you this state. Okay, so this moment I see that I can sign in into the same uh, orchestrator um, instance that we have and to the same tenant. So when I click the signing button, uh, because I'm already signed in in my browser, uh, it has, has skipped all those, uh, all those steps and all I need to do is confirm my sign in. So now that I'm signed in, what you will see suddenly is that you are connected to Orchestrator, but now you see here that it says robot does not exist, which, you know, before your robot was existing because you're connected to that specific, uh, with that specific machine key, but now that you signed in with, um, with your account, it says that your robot does not exist. So let's see how we, how we are going to fix that. So we're back here in, um, in Orchestrator. Also under tenants, we have users, okay? And under users, I have here my, um, my user, okay? Brepartmailnature.com. This is the username that I use to sign in into Orchestrator. Now for this user, what I will do is I will go ahead and edit the user. And uh, here you can see that for this user, I can say, I want this user to have an attended robot. And, um, you know, I want the attended robot to be automatically created for my user and the robot, the license type, I want it to be studio. So I want this particular user myself to have a studio license. It could be anything else, obviously, assuming you have um, 
you have those licenses. Uh, I've also enabled another functionality called personal workspaces, but I'll leave it empty for now because this is not about that. And I will hit update. Now, the second I hit update, what happens is that, uh, did it work? It probably did. Okay, there we go. Uh, it updated the user. And now if I go here under robots, you will see this, this robot here, uh, autogen backslash b repipemailinator.com. It's the provision time, it's a, it's a modern robot, uh, studio floating license, uh, it's currently disconnected, but the robot was created for me, okay? And if I go under machines, um, you should see here the machine automatically being created for this particular user as well. So let's go back here in, uh, in, uh, in Assistant, and now you see that the robot is connected to Orchestrator. Okay, so that's, that's really good. So now my robot, uh, my, my assistant is back online, it's, uh, uh, it's logged in. But what you can see here is that there are actually no processes for this particular user. And that's because right now, instead of using the old robot, now we're connected with the new robot. So what we need to do is give this new robot access to those same, uh, those same processes. Now, how do we do that? I come here under my, um, my, my folder and here under users, you see here that I have my user already uh, already assigned, okay? And then I have uh, my environment. And under this environment, uh, let's uh, choose manage. I'm gonna manage the users. And I can see that uh, I don't have that newly created user here because the user time is modern. And this, uh, this is a bit tricky. Uh, the folder that I was using here, uh, we call it a classic folder, okay? because we've also introduced this concept of modern folders. So what we need to do is move my automations that I have already created in this classic folder, I need to move them to my modern folder. So let's see how we do that. We go back to our tenant and here I have folders and this is the folder management section. I hit the plus button and I choose to add a modern folder and I will call it, uh, let's call it the same thing, default. No, it's not working. Uh, Call it root because it's the root folder. Okay, now this is my root folder. My my uh, user, you see that it's already assigned to this uh, to this folder. So now if I go back um, here, okay, we can see that the new folder that was just added um, just showed up. Under users, we have our users. Under machines, uh, I don't think we need to do anything under machines. All we need to do now is go to the automations tab and uh, add those automations here as well. Now the question is, how do you add those automations? Where do you get them from? Um, actually, maybe no. Maybe I can just hit the plus button under. Yes, okay, perfect. So the packages are already here because the packages are at a tenant level. So I will choose Hello World as one of the packages. I choose Create. So now I created the Hello World automation also in this particular folder, and I will also create that second um, automation, supplier management, that second process. Okay, now I have the two processes under my folder um, that, have been, um, that have been added. So if I go back into my UiPath Assistant, now you can see those processes, uh, they just showed up, okay? So, and now you can run them. So we're back to that initial state, but now instead of using, um, instead of using a machine key, uh, I'm, I'm using, a, um, uh, actually it still uses a machine key. Okay. So let me say, I want to connect using the service URL, cloud.uipad.com. I'm signing in. And there we go. Now I'm signed in using the service URL. So I'm, I'm actually using my, my sign in here. Yeah. And the other thing that I could do is just go again at a, at a tenant level under my robots here. And maybe I want to get rid of this robot to do this uh, in, on, my, um, uh, on my default um, folder, my classic folder. I can choose to remove my old robot. Let's see if it works. Yes, it does. I can also choose to remove my environment. 
just cleaning up a few of these things here. Uh, there are processes targeting the environment. Okay, no problem. We need to remove those processes first. Uh, under automations, we have processes. Okay, I choose to remove the first one. Again, I'm, I'm in the classic folder called default. So we remove the two processes. Uh, we remove the environment. And now I think I can remove the whole folder. So from tenant folders, I can come here and I can say, I want to remove the folder. Let's see what happens. There we go. Now the folder was removed. So all I have is a new classic folder. It's called root. In here, I have my automations. As you can see, uh, my users are being defined here. Um, and um, everything should work just fine. So now I'm here in assistant. I can, let's choose to sign out and sign in again. Make sure that that works fine. Okay, continue. And there we go, we're connected as you can see and I have my two processes that I can even choose to run. So I have my hello world process that I just started. It has a message box saying hello world. So I can see that the process is also working. Okay, so that's about it. That's what you need to do uh, to migrate from, uh, from a UiPath system that is connected to Orchestrator, that has a couple of processes defined at a classic folder level, creating a modern folder, moving those processes over, enabling user authentication and so forth. Now your processes might also use things like queues or assets. In that case, you need to move those queues and assets also in the modern folder for it to has access to, uh, to them. So that's, that's it. I hope you enjoy this. Thank you.